Normally when we build a user interface, it's one button does, well, one thing. But what if we want that one button to do anything? What if we want that one button to run any macro? What if we want a user to pick which macro to run? How can we handle that? Well, that's what we're looking at in this video. So if you're ready, let's get started. If you're there thinking, what on earth is Mark talking about? One button to run any macro, what does he even mean? Well, let's have a look at this example here. I've got a drop down box here in cell C2. It has four items in it, toggle grid lines, create sheet, color cell, and message box. Let's select toggle grid lines, and then I'll click the button. You can see that when we click that, it toggles the grid lines on or off. Let's go for color cell. Then I'll select cell J2, I'll click my button, and it colors whichever cell I have selected. Or let's select one more, how about message box? I'll click that. And you can see we have the words hello world there in the message box. Now it doesn't matter what these macros actually do. The point is that a user is able to select from a drop down list and then run those macros. So let's see how we can build this for ourselves. Okay, so let's work through this example together. First of all, let's take a look at the macro code. Press Alt and F11 to open up the Visual Basic Editor. You'll notice that I have four macros in here. These are the four macros that we looked at during the example. You'll also notice that they're all private, which means they don't appear in our assign macro dialog box. Now what these macros do is kind of irrelevant because ultimately you'll use this technique with your own macros, but they're here to demonstrate how this example works. Here back in Excel, we have our worksheet and you can see we have our list of our macro names, toggle grid lines, create sheet, color cell, message box. So these are the names exactly as they appear in our VBA code editor. Next to that, we have the nice names, the names that we might refer to these macros by. Up here in cell C2, I have a data validation list. So I'll go to data and then data validation. You can see that this data validation list references cell E6 to E9. And this is what we can select from our list have this item called selected macro, and this is just an index match function. You could use VLOOKUP or XLOOKUP or any other lookup function that you like that returns the name of the macro based on the nice name that is selected in cell C2. Right, now let's insert a shape to act as our button. You can use any shape that you like, so you can select one of these. I'm going to go for an icon. Then in the search box, I'm gonna search for a robot is our robot, and then I'll click Insert. Okay, let's drag him across and resize him slightly. Now this next bit is really important. With our shape selected, you can see at the top that this shape is called Graphic 2. I'm going to rename this to be Range, colon, and then enter F2. Now F2 is the cell reference that contains the name of the selected macro. Then to commit this, I'll press Enter. So my shape is now called range colon F2. Okay, now let's head back into the Visual Basic Editor. And in module two, I have what I'm calling the magic macro. This is the macro that links all of this together. At the start, we create three variables, shape name, macro name, and cell ref. We start by getting the shape name, and this is based on the application.caller. Now, whatever shape we click, that is the name that is passed across as the application caller. So therefore, having our shape name as range colon F2, that means our variable shape name is now equal to range colon F2. In the next section of code, we take that name and we extract the element after the colon. So that means that cell ref is just equal to F2. Next, we get our macro name and our macro name is based on whatever value we have in cell F2. So active sheet, the range, F2, and then value. So whatever value we have in F2, that becomes our macro name. Then finally, we use the application.run method. Using application.run, we can pass variables across to determine which macro we want to run. So we start here with the name of our workbook. So this workbook.name, and then we use our macro name to create that as a single string. So this means whatever text we have in cell F2, that Excel will try and run that as a macro. Okay, let's head back into Excel, Alt F11. 
I'm going to right click and go to assign macro. Here we just have one macro visible in our workbook. Remember the other macros are there, but they are set as private, which means they don't appear in this list. I'll select magic macro, then click OK. Right, let's try this for ourselves. There we go. We click that button. It toggles the grid lines. I select that, use color cell, click that. It now colors the cell that we have selected. So that's it. With one button, we can run any macro that we like, and we can even give users the ability to select a macro, and then they can run that macro with a single button. So if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and get notifications. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.